All right, so what I'm going to do now is go through my normal process that I use to edit my audio files for audiobooks. I've had to re-record some chapter titles because the number of chapters in the book changed, and I recorded some more of a short story that I'm recording. And the first thing you'll see is the clicks. The clicks are because I'm using the click method for editing instead of roll and punch. And that's, I go back and forth between the two. It depends on how my booth is set up at the moment, what equipment I'm experimenting with, etc. So I have a little dog clicker. It sounds like this. And whenever I click it, that tells me that's where I've made a mistake. So the first thing I want to do is do my editing, which means getting rid of these clicks. Following the click will be the new take, and before it will be the mistake. So exactly, exact. So I don't have to listen to much to know where the screw up is. DJ, DJ. Does anyone have, does anyone? There's a little rather long pause here, so I'm going to zoom out a bit. DJ was on. DJ was on. And what I'm doing is I'm grabbing from just before the mistake to about the same distance from the follow-up. The gap here, the pause between words or sentences, won't really be noticeable, and I'll play a little bit as an example. And wearing sagging jeans, was slowly maneuvering a pistol into position. DJ was unsure where the man could have concealed it with. So now deep, now he could hold as a, he could. Hold. This is really the most, mm, actually, no, it used to be the worst part for me. The worst part is anytime I have to actually sit and listen through to the whole thing, like a proof listen to make sure there are no errant sounds in there, like a chair squeak or the rustle of my headphone cable against my shirt or a weird noise out of the back of my throat that I didn't notice at the time or reading through reading the manuscript along with the audio to make sure that I didn't skip a word or replace the wrong word with something. The truth was DJ tended when face the truth was normally when I'm recording and I make a mistake, I'll only go back to the to the last comma or period to you know, you can't just pick up on the exact word that you messed up because in the flow, like for example, if you look at this section here, you really can't cut this up, but I bet you this is several words. All he had done to silver, all he had done to silver, if I had mispronounced done in there, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to replace that and have it sound seamless. All he, all he, he looked at, he looked at, He considered it. He considered. Sounds weird to just hear a couple seconds. See, in a case like this, this is probably something where I screwed up the same thing multiple times in a row, and I don't want to listen to each one. So let's see if that's the case. Hand darting. He reached. Nope. Hand. He reached. That's actually two separate mistakes. So here, starts with he reached. Hand. Oh, hand. 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 Actually, I did mess that up twice. So here's something I also do sometimes. You see the clicks here. There are two clicks really close together, and the reason is that when you push the clicker, it clicks, and when you release it, it clicks again, so you get two clicks. But here, I got a click and a click, because I pushed it, held it, and let it go. And when I do that, sometimes I talk in the middle to leave myself a note, and the rest of the time, that's just a space so I can breathe because I... It was a long sentence, or I, my breathing technique wasn't very good at that particular moment, and I had to stop and take a breath. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just click and retake the last sentence I read just so it's seamless editing, just like the rest. I don't get confused like I just did. And sometimes I'll leave a gap there. And I think the problem here is that this click looked a little thicker for some reason. Maybe I wasn't holding... The clicker in the same position in front of the microphone that I usually do. The Glock. The Glock. All right. So now we're back on track. The familiar. The familiar. And you can really usually just by looking at it, you can tell maybe this one isn't the best example, but this certainly is this section here 
and this section here are almost definitely the same words. And he would like it. And he would like it. Let's see. DJ. T DJ. So you could possibly even go through and do this without listening. It became. It became. I don't recommend it, but it's possible. The man. Ha the man. Ha and this is short. I didn't do a very long session here, but if a chapter is a half hour, hour, maybe sometimes 45 minutes, then this will be a lot longer. I found for me personally, I end up cutting out about a third of the overall length. So if I record 30 minutes after I edit it, I have about 20 minutes left. And that's with the beginning, getting some room tone as you may see in the beginning here, I'll zoom out. There's a section here that's about 44 seconds long where I just tried to stay as quiet as possible. And actually, if we look at the spectrogram here in Audacity, that should look pretty clean. So I can use this for both the noise reduction and if I need to grab some nice clean noise to paste over something that's a little bit noisy. All DJ, all J. And I'll look here. This is definitely, I screwed up something multiple times. I probably stumbled on a word or something. And you aren't just, and you are. Oh yeah. That's a case where I decided to change a word, flip two words in the script because I thought it sounded more natural. Sometimes I click and do it over, not because I made a mistake so much as reading the sentence and listening to myself perform it. I really think it should have been said a little bit differently or a different voice or less common, but I have had an author where they didn't follow the conventional rules for changing characters. So within the same paragraph, two people would speak and I'd be using the wrong voice and I'd have to do a lot of retakes there. All right. So here, here's an example of what I was talking about before where I clicked and said something and here I said, end here. Um, this wasn't the end of the piece. I just decided that it was time to end. <clears throat> and that's just me clearing my throat. That, that I started to say a sentence and decided to say, screw it. So let's have another quick look. Now here at the beginning, these are some chapter titles that I needed to redo because some of the chapters were renumbered. So for example, chapter 17, the chase. So I'm not going to mess with those. I did do two or three takes of each one. And later I'll listen to see which one I like best. But right now, let's do some. Go ahead and delete that. That was just me testing room tone. And then I will change the end to edit. This is the edited version. All right, now I'm going to open that up in RX7. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into my nice pretty room tone here and clean up. I don't know if I was moving around or their breaths or whatever. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I like to get rid of the more obvious bits. <clears throat> yep, nobody needed to hear that. Oh, I accidentally grabbed it by the clip gain section. And we'll get rid of this, this. And one th annoying thing about RX-7 is if you delete all the way to the beginning, it completely ruins your zoom, which is annoying. So now let's grab a whole bunch of this. What do we have over here? 32 seconds. That's way more than I need. So that's fine. Spectral denoise, do the highest quality, sample that. Then if I go through like, for example, if I go and play this now here, we can see it's about minus 61 decibels down at the bottom by my cursor. That's actually pretty consistent. If I, render the entire thing with the spectral denoise. The default is 12 decibels, and I think that's pretty good. Now, if we have a listen, it's about minus 71 here. It was minus 75 for a second. And you can see how the blacker, the better. Black means silence. You don't want dead silence. It's actually in violation of the ACX term. You can't have an audiobook with dead silence between words. It's very jarring, but that's pretty good. And I'm also going to copy this which allows me to do cool things. Actually, I don't really need it so much here, but let's take this little bit, for example. It's just some noise. I can paste 
over it. Now the selection I pasted is a little shorter than what was actually there, leaving dead silence in the middle. You can see here. So I'm just going to delete that out because I don't need it. So the other thing I want to do, well, let's go back to the end here and just clean up that little bit. Paste that nice room tone over it and do a mouth declick. I really only do the spectral denoise and mouth declick. Some people might want to also do the de-esser. If you're not using a compressor or if your mic technique isn't that good, you might need to deal with the deplosive, which is actually surprisingly effective. I've used it. And I save this with the extension RX. And then close it. Even though it's saved, I like to close it because if I go back to the window and I see the file open, I'm not sure if I closed or not, and that could be a point of confusion. And the last step is I want to compress and normalize. So if you so there's a tool, it's called ACX Check. It's a plugin that you can get for free. Just Google ACX Check Audacity. And it shows you the important things are your peak, which needs to be no more than minus three your RMS, which needs to be between minus 18 and minus 23, and the noise floor, which has to be below minus 60. So you want it to be about as loud as possible. It's under three. And the RMS, which is basically the average loudness, it's root mean squared. It's complex mathematical stuff I don't understand, but I know how to mess with audacity to make it what I need it to be. And the noise floor, as long as it's below minus 60, you're good. The problem is, well, I'll demonstrate it here. If I take this chunk here, so let's see, what do we have? Let's just say from here to the beginning, this is two minutes, right? So if I do the ACX check, you'll see the RMS is negative 41.3. But if I take two minutes that has a lot more talking in it, you'll see it's minus 33. So is it minus 41? It's almost a 10 decibel difference. And what I really want to do is normalize this, but it's going to be really difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just this section here and duplicate it. And this is just a little thing I figured out yesterday. When you're doing an entire chapter, it's not a big deal because you have a whole lot of talking and like two seconds of room tone at the end and one second at the beginning. And overall, the RMS is going to be pretty accurate. But for something like this, where you have to do retakes and just record a handful of sentences, then normalizing this is kind of a pain in the ass. So this is really useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all my work here and just remember the settings. So I'm defaulting here to my threshold is anything under minus 30 dB, which is really quiet, will be my threshold. The noise floor is minus 40. So I'm saying don't raise the volume of anything below minus 40. And the ratio is 2.5 to 1. So I probably did a bad job explaining that. Let me uh, go in a little more detail. So with compression, if we just zoom in on this section here, we can see like this, for example, is a little louder than this, and so on. And even if I record something here, if I talk a little more loudly, and if I talk a little more quietly, then when the listener is listening to this audiobook, it's going to be uneven and it's going to be louder and quieter. So what we would like to do is we would like to compress it. Let's compress this as I would an audiobook. So the first thing, let me just make sure I don't have more than two seconds of silence at the beginning or end. I don't. And so we'll threshold. So minus 30. So anything, if we hover over this and we watch the meter here, it's going to be uneven and it's going to be... So we can see that most of the time I'm at least about minus 24 decibels it's going to be uneven and it's going to be so that so to make my threshold minus 30 is actually maybe a little too low let's make the threshold minus 24 so anything that's minus 24 or quieter we're going to leave alone that's loud enough anything that's louder than minus 24 we are going to make it quieter in this case let's for example make it a ratio of three to one so if something is minus 24, it's going to remain minus 24. If it's minus 30, it's going to remain minus 30. But say it's minus 21, which is three decibels louder than minus 24. It's going to reduce that to minus 23. 
one decibel quieter because three to one ratio. So if something was six decibels louder, say, or let's go all the way to 12. If I really yelled and something went up to minus 12, that's 12 more than 24. So instead of it being 12 decibels louder, it would be four decibels louder, 12 divided by three. So that's what this ratio is for. And then the noise floor, let's actually see what our noise floor is. We take a part that's relatively quiet. It's below minus 48. So saying minus 40 is fine. I could make it lower, closer to 48 if I wanted, but I'll leave it there. Attack time and release time. When it gets loud, start lowering the volume within a tenth of a second and release it right away. These settings work fine for, for voice. I wouldn't uh, recommend this for music, which I don't know how to compress, so find a tutorial from someone who knows what they're doing. And I use this uh, compressed base based on peaks. I don't do the makeup gain because I'll do that during normalization. I don't want zero. I want it to be to ACX standards. So here, now that I've done that, just to look at the ACX check, you see it's a bit too loud and it's a bit too loud. So I like to normalize mine to minus 3.1. The standard says minus three. I like to be minus 3.1 because it's just at the edge. And we take another look. So minus 3.1, noise floor minus 62 and a minus 18.3. This isn't bad. I usually try to go for, this would pass. I try to go for minus 20 or as close to it as I can get. So let's go back and change the, so if it's too loud, that means I've compressed it too much. So let's try two and a half. And that's 18.9. So I've still compressed it too much. Let's try two. 19.7, really close to where I want to be. So let's do just a little more, maybe 1.8. Boo, 20.1. So between 19.9 and 20.1 is where I like to be. And now this is at a level that I would submit it to ACX. Record something here. If I talk a little more loudly, and if I talk a little more quietly, then when the listener is listening to this audiobook, so now the quiet part isn't as quiet and the loud part isn't as loud. Now, in this case, if I may, part of the reason I maybe had to mess with the compression so much is this peak here. There's also an effect here called amplify. And what I'll sometimes do go is go in here and amplify by like negative three to five decibels, which puts it more in line with the rest. And you really can't tell the difference. Record something here. If I talk a little more loudly, see, it sounds totally fine. Then if I compress with the same settings, now it's still louder. I can even compress a little bit less. The less you have to compress, the better off you are. If you have to compress too much, then there's something wrong with your mic technique or, you know, you're just, you're not able to control your, keep your volume consistent. So back to what I was doing here. Let's try the same thing here. And, all right, minus 21.1, that's a little too quiet, so it means I've compressed it a little bit too little. So let's go back and let's try 2.1. Just kind of get a feel for it. Minus 20.4, not quite good enough. Let's try 0.3, 2.3 ratio. And 20.0 dead. Perfect. And the noise floor is great. It's minus 72.5 because I was recording in a really quiet environment. So that shows you that you can record an acceptable audiobook even in less than optimal conditions because I'm 12 dB below the standard. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to apply those same settings to the overall file. Now you'll see if I do the ACX check on this entire file, I'm at minus 21, which is not where I want to be. But ignoring that, if I just look at the body here, 
where I'm constantly speaking. Minus 20 point run, one right in my range. And for ACX, what I would do, ignoring this for the moment, is I would chop this down to one second or less of room noise at the beginning, two seconds or less of room noise at the end, and that's it. That's how you edit a file for ACX. That's how I edit a file for ACX for an audiobook from raw recording to ready to go out the door.